Let my people go. The Lord of hosts will do battle for us. Hello brothers and sisters, I hope that you all are doing well and I thank you for joining me on another video. I've gotten moved out of the old place and into a different one. I'm very excited about this new chapter in my life and no matter how short it may be because I know that we're about to leave this place. As far as dreams and visions, the attacks still seem to be pretty high. Along with physical attacks, the move was pretty hard on my body and has taken a big toll on me. So, please, if you could, pray for me. I'd like to also ask you all to pray for my brother. His name is Garrett. Since he was young, he developed bipolar and schizophrenia. Then I believe that the enemy moved in and caused some mental disorders. And then some things happened in his life that I believe caused him to have somewhat of a nervous breakdown. And so, I've moved next to him, and so hopefully the Lord could use me to help lead him to Christ 
It's just one of those things to where you know the only one who could save him, the only one who could change his life is the Lord. But I also want to praise the Lord for the wonderful things that are happening in my family. My mom, for the first time, seems to be totally surrendering her life to the Lord. My little sister did a few months ago and she's doing so good you guys, she's doing amazing. My little brother, or one of my little brothers, moved kind of close to me so that he could learn from me and that he could also surrender his life to the Lord. And so it's like a fire that is setting off in the family, and it's been such a blessing to watch. But since the move, I must say that spiritual warfare is still really high, and I can tell from my dreams alone that the enemy and his minions are really mad that family are giving their lives to Jesus Christ. For example, just last night I had a dream. I was there, and I won't go into detail, because some of it is personal, I believe, with her. But there was this evil spirit trying to kill her. So I was there, and I noticed this, and I was worried about her, so I was trying to rescue her. I made my way to where she was. She was in this house, but the door was locked. So I make my way to the window. The window has blinds on it, a type of shade. And what's strange about that is the very day before I have this dream, I actually helped my mom put shades up. She's getting a little older in years, and she doesn't have a husband, and so I've been trying to help her a little more lately. And so I help her put these shades up, and the very next day, or the same night, I have a dream about shades. And since the door is locked, I'm kind of tearing these shades down, and I can see through the glass window. I'm yelling, Mom! There's a murderer coming to get you, so be careful, watch out. And as I'm saying that, my mom's ex-boyfriend is there. He was a bad influence on her, so I thank God that he is no longer with her. And as I'm there warning that this murderer is coming, he actually yells out the name. You mean so-and-so and says the name. And it was the correct name. And then my mom looks at him and says, well, how did you know that? And if I remember correctly, I'm still looking through the window as the enemy attacks me from behind. We then get into a little fight, and as this is happening, he gets cast down, or is falling to the ground. I look down, and I notice that he's falling from a really high part. So I was standing up really high, and I noticed that he was dropping really far down, and then the dream ended. And what's also strange is that my mom's name is Angela which is short for Angel, Messenger of God. Since being in this new location, I've had one of the strangest dreams or experiences that I've ever had. We read in Psalms chapter 82 verse 1, God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. And we read in Psalms chapter 89 verses 5 to 7, let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones, and awesome above all who are around him? So I want to make sure that I start off by saying that the Lord God is one Lord. So I'm in this experience. I'm not sure if it's a, just a really vivid dream or if I'm actually there, but my eyes start to focus in on all these beings sitting at desks. It looked like some type of assembly or gathering, and I just felt that it was representing the divine council. My eyes seemed to focus in on a few of them, and I did notice that a few of them looked female, and as I looked, I was just thinking, wow, that's a really pretty girl. And then I'd look and see a different girl, uh, I'd find one and notice how she looked. And I just thought they looked really beautiful and young. And I remember walking around and noticing this book set out. I was still in my current way of thinking and so I couldn't read the writing. I'm not sure if it was an angelic text, the Enochian language, I'm not sure what it was. But I know that I couldn't make it out as of that point. I then started to feel that some of those beings were evil that they were following the enemy. And so I started to go to each one of them, or at least it felt that way. And I was starting to almost interrogate them. 
I was asking them questions and I forgot what all I said to them but there was a part to where I go to each one and I'd say something to them and then to see if they were evil or not I would command them in the name of Jesus Christ that if they were evil I guess I was saying leave or just getting rid of them and every person that I commanded in the name of Christ to go on that council left and so I felt like I might have been going to each one of them just to find out who was on the Lord's side in this in this divine council. And as I went up to them, I would talk to them, I would kind of interrogate them. And then I would say, in the name of Jesus Christ, like to, I guess, leave if they weren't of the Lord. And do you know that just about every single person that I went up to, and I felt like maybe one or two good ones were there, but I felt like 98% of those on that council were evil. And so the whole building was almost smooth out the place felt like it was evacuated I just felt like there might have been one or two beings that were able to remain and like I said I talked to them I questioned them and I commanded them that I think if they were evil that they had to go and I commanded them that in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord and so they left and so this place was almost empty. And then I'm standing there and I'm talking to this being, this angel who's standing before me. And I look behind this person and I see three huge beings, Nephilim looking. I'm not sure if they were fallen angels or if they were three Nephilim, but they were walking towards me. They were behind this being that I was talking to who I felt might have been good. They were walking towards us and she or he does something with its eyes kind of blinks the eyes as if it has powers and then boom they are destroyed the three beings that were walking towards us were completely destroyed and then the short time while living here I have another experience that I felt was bad I'm there and I see the person in front of me who looks like the representation of John the Baptist that I see sometimes now when I see this person he is also symbolic of Michael sometimes and so this person, if I remember correctly, goes to try to attack me or fight me. I don't even really remember how it started, but I just remember that I got really bad. I mean, I was punching him with my fist, knocking him out, and people were around watching if I remember. But I think this was just the enemy trying to make me think that my brother is turning against me. You know, something like that. I don't pay much attention to it. And so then I go into another scene. There seems to be this beautiful girl who keeps following me around everywhere. And it's as if this being is trying to get me to develop feelings for her. And it's just, it's just going on for a pretty long part of the dream. And as we're there, we get to a part to where somehow we go to kiss. And of course, I'm telling you guys that I don't believe this is from the Lord. I'm just sharing what happened with you. And I'm just building up to something that I saw. And so we go to kiss and she does something really weird with her mouth that I was like, what is going on here? Like she didn't even seem human anymore. And then I see these two angels. They were male. They might have been taking a knee. I'm not sure, but they were there in front of me. They looked about 20 years old, very beautiful. And as I'm looking at them, I'm remembering them. Or at least it felt like that in the experience. I felt like I knew them, that before the fall, I was related to them in some way, that they were family members. That's how I felt, and I recognized them. And I say to them, who is that girl? Or what about that girl that I saw a little bit ago? And they say, Jason, she's a monster. I said, oh, she's a monster. And then at some point, I find myself in a whole different scene, a very vivid, horrible scene. If you can imagine, I'm looking up in the air. I'm seeing what looks to be the fall, the fall of the angels. I see what looks to be outer darkness or space. It was just so black and dreary. But I see red blotches uh, or red hue throughout the blackness as they fell. And I could see the outline of millions or thousands of angels. And I could hear their voices. It was so horrible. Male and female angels just screaming like the screams of hell or the screams of those who have been cast into the pit. That is what I heard. But it was coming from these fallen angels as they fell through outer space or outer darkness. I'm seeing their outline and I'm just hearing them scream. Screaming, and their voices sound so pitiful. If you can imagine again, as I said, poor souls that are in the pit burning with their skin falling off their body, just screaming for, for one drop of water on their tongues. 
To me, this is how these fallen angels sounded as they were being cast from heaven. In another vision, I'm looking at what seems to be an angel. Part of its body seemed to be the normal color of flesh to me, just tan skin. I'm not saying that it had skin, I'm just saying that it looked like it had the color or appearance of a person's tan skin. But three-fourths of its body, or maybe half of it, glowed like a rainbow. It kind of almost looked like glowing rainbowish tattoos as well, so I'm not sure what was going on there. I had talked to my mom about this and she kind of was in shock. She said she was talking to my sister before and that at the hospital, I believe that's where she saw it, she saw an angel that had the appearance of a rainbow. And so when I told her that, she was just like, wow, I've actually seen that before or an angel that looked like that. I then went on to have another vision. I saw what looked to be a lake or a body of water. And I noticed that on the top of it, kind of spread out evenly all, all on the top of this lake were pink flower petals. And they were just everywhere floating on the top of the water and then the vision ended. I love to hear any thoughts or ideas you guys have about this vision. So if you have any, please comment below. Like I said, I'd love to hear them. I then had this vision of two heavenly swords. They both had my name engraved in both of them. And it reminded me of an older vision to where I was in this place. This being was walking me to this closet. I'm not sure if it was representing an angel or the Holy Spirit, but this being opens up this closet door and I see two round staffs there. And I knew that they were my staffs, or I just felt that way. And so it was kind of symbolic here, I think. Two swords, two staffs. And I did get some pretty interesting numbers for this vision. I got the number 304, which in Strong's means a going up and ascent. I got the number 522, which in Strong's means to lift off. I got the number 5222, which in Strong's means a going to meet. And lastly, I got the number 28, which means my father has took knowledge, a son of Midian. And again, when I see that number, it reminds me of Moses. And then I have those really strange visions that I'm not even sure if I should be sharing or not. I'll share a few with you now. And I'd love to get you guys' opinions on this. I did a poll before on this and I think most of you told me to share the good and the bad. But you know, it's, it's something that I continually need to be praying about uh, just to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And so I heard this, this voice kind of yelling at me and it said, and above all else, you will be a god. That's all I heard, someone yelling at me and saying, And above all else, you will be a god. And of course, I know that I'm nothing, I'm but a worm. And there is only one god, because the Lord God is one Lord. And then I'll have the really strange audibles. The ones to where I'll hear a voice saying, I come to serve you. And another one will say, I serve you. Completely different audibles, different visions, but I'm hearing the same types of things. And as many of you know, audibles don't always come from the Lord. Sometimes they come from fallen angels and Nephilim, evil spirits, even witches and warlocks. So you gotta be careful. For example, I heard in an audible, Lucifer asked for you. Lucifer asked for you and they even manipulated the time that I heard the audible so they can do that as well I, I heard it at 1 30 which in Bible will one of the meanings was Moses and so when you see numbers they're not always from the Lord I want to make that clear that sometimes the enemy can even deceive you with numbers that's why it's so important to stay in relationship with Jesus Christ you know, if you are walking in the Holy Spirit, your discernment will be raised and the Holy Spirit will make these things clear to you, or at least put you on the right path to understand it. And know that just as you can tell a man or a woman by their fruit, you can also tell the fruit of a dream or a vision. Does it help you in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Does it bring you to Him? Or does it push you away from Him? Does it help you in your relationship with Him? Giving you more faith and encouragement to come to Him? Or does it kind of push you away and make you doubt Him? So just remember to be paying attention to the fruit of your dreams and visions as well. 
I then would have this vision to where I'm seeing a dragon lineup. They all seem to be different colors, some larger than the others. They were semi-transparent and they were just standing in a lineup as I was watching them or looking at them. I got the number 652, which in Strong's means messenger, apostle, one sent on a mission. And I also got the number that means darkness and gloom. So yeah, I mean, really strange. They were just there in front of me, different colors, different sizes, semi-transparent. And it, it was as if they were in a lineup before me as I was just looking at them. Not sure why I saw that. And then for the final vision, I seemed to be driving down the highway in a car. I noticed this huge billboard on the side of the road. You know the kind you see when you take a long trip, there are these huge billboards out that you keep passing up. Well, this one was all torn up, except it had a huge dragon that landed on it. I didn't see it land, but it was already there, and it was just perched on this torn up billboard, and we were just staring down at each other as I passed by. I hope that you all have enjoyed this video. I love you all greatly. I miss you. I hope that your lives are going good in Christ, that your relationship with Him is as strong as ever. If you have not already, I invite you all to be baptized by full submersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by a born-again brother in Christ. Please remember to daily repent of your sins to turn from them and to do the first works. The Lord says in John chapter 14 verses 15 to 25, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be with you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. So I invite you all to come unto Jesus Christ, to repent of your sins, and to remember that if you truly love Jesus, keep his commandments. And I say these things in the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You've come in the final days. Oh, when God has held you in reserve for nearly 6,000 years, you have been renewed. You are a marked generation. You are a generation. You are a generation. The birth at this particular time was God has saved for the final inning and arms of you have been You must be prepared to meet your God. Oh, youth of the noble birth. You're part of the Lord's royal army. An army. There are things for each of you to do. as well as you are special as well. You. 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 Me?